about why and how Anna's Africa began. But first of all, I just got to thank these wonderful boys for their music, which was fantastic. Um, yeah. About three months after Anna died in a car crash, Anders and my son, I went to Africa with Nick Redding, who's a dear friend, who'd asked me to go out to photograph a theatre troupe he was working with in the slums in Mombasa. And I was still sort of reeling from grief from Anna's death, but Nick had thought it would be good for me, and he was absolutely right. I found myself in the slums with my cameras around my neck and surrounded by a horde of the most amazing children. And these children were kids who couldn't go to school, whose parents didn't have the money to go to school, to send them to school. Many of them didn't even have parents. Many of them had no homes to go to. They were a scruffy old bunch with their torn t-shirts and their rather sort of bedraggled party frocks from Oxfam and huge flip-flops or bare feet. And anyway, they hung around with us all. Um, and I suddenly found myself feeling happy, inexplicably happy. And I thought they'd really helped to sort of break down this wall of sadness that had hemmed me in after Anna's death. So when we got back to England and Nick, my dear friend, said, I'm going to form, I'm going to create a charity called SAFE, Sponsored Arts for Education, and will you be a director? I said, absolutely yes. And then when he said, what would I particularly like to do under this umbrella? I said, I would like to do something for these children who have no education, no chance of any education, to create a sort of alternative arts program for them. So, sorry, this is echoing, isn't it? Can I stand back no, a bit? I, <laughs> anyway, so um, we found ourselves last January. It took five years. It finally came to fruition. Thanks hugely to Anna's papa, Andrew, who had published a book of his poetry and raised some money from that. And then through his own pocket, subsidized this whole eight week project that we did. And I think we have, I'm so grateful for your help tonight because if we hadn't got it, I think Andrew and Karen would be on the streets by Christmas. So we are now going to continue with this program. And um, I'll tell you a little bit about, bit about the slums because I know that um, Joanna told you something too, but our kids in particular, in Majengo, it's desperately poor. They live in huts, maybe eight or nine or ten people to a little house that's um, usually made out of galvanized iron or in Majengo, some old 800 year old mud huts. They have no running water, they have no toilets, there are open sewers outside, um, a little bit of electricity if they can manage to kind of hook up to somewhere. As a result of this, most of them are prey to all kinds of diseases. Many of them won't make it into adult health. The child mortality rate there is desperate. Many of them won't make it. And a lot of them die from the big killers, which are, of course, malaria and AIDS. I mean, when I was at the school with Sally, they have all kinds of other things that they have to cope with. Firstly, of course, malnutrition. These kids are really lucky if they get one meal a day. But most of them come to school hungry. The school did a feeding program at lunchtime, and so did we when we had our weekend sessions there. But most of them are hungry most of the time. Um, so the malnutrition, chest infections, a lot of them sleep under the beds in these huts because there's nowhere else for them, so they get chest infections. A lot of them suffer from intestinal worms, skin infections, ringworm, you name it. But they are the most amazingly happy children. Um, as I say, sadly some of them won't make it. We had a beautiful boy called Victor who died three weeks after we left. And he was called Victor Artienu, you can see some of his work up here. He was a hugely talented young man. He died of malaria. And after we got back, we heard this news, and we were all terribly sad. And his grandmother, who he lived with, because a lot of the middle generation had been wiped out by AIDS, he lived with his grandmother, and she sent a message to us. And she said to thank Karen and Marie, who'd run the art program, for the fact that Victor had had such a happy last few weeks of his life. And then she said something that broke us all apart. She said, I'm so glad that Victor knew he was an artist before he died. So, of course, he did know he was an artist, and the reason Victor knew he was an artist is because we had a badge to prove that he was an artist. Because at the end of our session of eight weeks, we gave everybody a certificate. This was a brilliant idea from Heaton, our project manager. They all had a certificate and a badge, and their badge said, dancer, singer, artist, acrobat. And Victor wore his badge with pride, and quite rightly, because he was hugely talented, as were all these children. 
that we worked with. But what I want to say very quickly tonight is that what you see on the walls represents only a very small part, with one fifth of the program that we ran, because we also did five other disciplines. We did acrobats, you know, circus arts, we did music and drama. But of course, we couldn't bring them all with us. I mean, we couldn't bring 30 little dancers and 30, we bought Lou, but we couldn't bring all the others with us. So we decided that we would bring the art, because that's what we could carry. So these pictures on these walls represent not just the art group, not just each individual child, but behind every single one of these paintings, there are five, 10, 20, 100 children whose hopes have been blessed by you tonight by buying these paintings. So you're not just, you're not just helping the art group, you're helping the whole project. So thank you everybody, thank you for all these, I can't, it sounds like an Oscar speech if I thank everybody, but the Anna Zafrovic team and all the volunteers tonight and everybody that's been involved, all our trustees for SAFE have been brilliant. Ian Homer, patron who sadly couldn't be here tonight because he's not well, but he's been stalwart in his support of us. And as I say, Alan Rickman and Sabrina and Libby and all our patrons, our, our trustees. So thank you everybody and thank you on behalf of these children. But most of all, I'm so grateful because through this project and through these joyous, amazing kids, Anno's bold heart will beat on. So thank you.